And uh, I started working with oils about um, a year and a half ago. And these are done in oils. And I use a technique where I uh, put a lot of safflower oil into the oil paint medium. And then I use it as uh, sort of the con convey the paint across the canvas. And um, I'm trying to get like really intense colors. And uh, I'm trying to get the paint to uh, speak for itself more than uh, sort of a conscious effort by the artist to make something, construct something, uh, shape on the canvas. I'm trying to get the paint to come out and sort of live on its own. And um, I generally let these kind of drip a little while. And then I'll change them. I'll flip them upside down and let them drip the other way. So it sort of soaks and creates patterns flowing down the canvas in different, in different ways. And um, uh, it, it probably takes about two or three hours and about two weeks to dry. And um, generally they're pretty quick because they're small. And, uh, but if they're big, they'd be more involved. And oil takes a long time to dry, so you have to really wait a while for it to finally congeal into the form you want it to be in. I have bigger ones, but using this technique, it's mostly been this size. And this size lends itself to changing the canvas, like you can tip it upside down or, or change it one way so the flow is different. And if they're bigger, it's harder to move them around. I've converted my apartment into a studio, so I don't have that much space, really. I basically the walls um, covered with paintings and there's stuff on the floor drying. I'm starting to run out of space, so the bigger canvases are harder to deal with. So the smaller size, I can manipulate them more. Um, i probably go a little bit bigger than this eventually. Maybe in the near future, next couple of months, I'll start going up bigger size, maybe uh, two or three times this size. Is there anything you'd like to say about Uh, no, I just think this is a great venue for showing art. I think it's a fantastic uh, place. Solar Culture's done a lot to uh, promote the arts in Tucson. And uh, this is actually probably one of the best shows they've ever had down here, I think. Just a, you know, just a cursory glance at what's around here right now. I think this is one of the best shows they've ever had. It seems to be getting better all the time. You're welcome. Take it easy. My name is Dr. Snutopia. And I started doing watercolors about 20 years ago. And then I quit because I was working on dissertation and future studies. And I couldn't use the other part of my brain. I guess the visual part of my brain and the written part of my brain is different. So it was really difficult to do both at once. So I quit doing water watercolor and I'm just recently getting back into it. And I do the medium because it's an environmentally uh, safe medium. You don't have to throw away any turpentine or pour it down any toxic waste down the sink. You just use water and uh, a beautiful medium. And especially here in the southwest cause, because it, uh, because everything dries so quickly, you can work very quickly with water. It's a wonderful medium. Can you tell us just a bit about the images we're looking at right now? Uh, one of them is about, uh, I, I, I use automatic drawing. I use automatic drawing. Uh, here, and um, this one I think is about UFOs or some mysterious forces. All my things I think deal with the uh, microcosm and the macrocosm, and how everything in the universe is connected. So that's my message: that we're all connected. We're on one planet, and we're going to have to live like we're we're one planet. So it's a peace message. I see you brought someone else. With you. Oh yes. Uh, this is Wayne Sumstein. Yeah, Wayne Sumstein. And I did these two pieces right right here. And uh, this one is uh, Adam and Eve. And this one here is, I don't know what that one is. It's, it's called Revelation. I guess you can in interpret it however you like. I guess even with the Adam and Eve piece, you can, in you can also interpret it how you like. What kind of medium that? It's a, it's a, actually, it's a, it's a mixture of several mediums. I use uh, rosin, a little bit of sand, acrylic, um, oil. Well, that, yeah, that's all that's in those. Uh, no. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Are you from Tampa? 
Tucson? Yeah, pretty much so. Yeah, I've, I've lived in Tucson now for about 10 years, and I, I grew up here, and I was away for about 15 years, but then I came back and been here for about 10 years now. Well, before that, I was a, a travel writer, and I, I pretty much got burnt out of, of, of travel writing, so I, I started painting. I thought I was going to try to make a living doing cartoons, and it, I did cartoons for, for about six months, and I couldn't sell them, and it just started getting more re more realistic as I went along, and, and uh, so now it's kind of doing dream. It's still a realistic style. It's sort of going into dream-type images. Thank you. I want to know why the woman is running out of the church. Yeah, why is that? We're all wondering. Well, uh, that, that's up to you to decide because she's not. She may be running out of the church, or she may not. You notice the church door is closed. Maybe she got close enough to the church that something scared her before she went in. I don't really know myself. <laughs> Anything you got to add to that? I don't know. She looks like a witch, me. And uh, I think she's a good witch. And she had to run out of the church because she just couldn't take the oppression of God the Father anymore. And she started realizing her inner, true inner nature. And that was one of, na of nature. And the church is really our environment. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, my name is Alita Menard. I'm an artist in Tucson. I do um, paintings. I, I'm exhibiting here. And I'm also exhibiting at the Sensio Gallery on Fort Lowell. And um, I have seven pieces there. And I do faux finishing and murals in Tucson as well. And that's what. Um, well, I used to always paint in oils. I, I learned very traditional techniques in oils. And then more recently, I'm painting in acrylics. And I want to see if I can accomplish what I can do in oils with acrylics, so that's my my recent challenges, I guess you could say, with painting. But I'm finding I can do it. At first it was difficult because they're very different mediums to work in. Although, now I did multimedia art that's in a sense here, it's like collage uh, type work um, where I f did uh, found items and and then I created a piece there that's made out of uh, clothing material. And sometimes I'll rip paint out of paint cans and use that in a three-dimensional piece. So I'm really expanding. And um, my next series of paintings that I'm going to do are very surrealistic. I think that's where I'm headed with my art is surrealism. Uh, well, I saw a photograph in an old magazine on photography of the woman, and she was in a very different backdrop, and I just felt that I wanted to capture the sensuality of a woman and uh, put her in a kind of a, three, uh, in a, well, I guess you could say a dream-like environment. So that's how that painting was created. Um, well, uh, you can see more at Asensio Gallery, <laughs> and and I hope to exhibit. I, I look forward to exhibiting in Sedona uh, sometime as well. Oh, that's a great piece of artwork you got there. Aikido recently. I study Aikido. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you.
Hi, here's another artist. Um, what is your name? Uh, Zach Lee Hetch. And what kind of art do you do? Um, I'm primarily a sculptor, but I also do uh, printmaking. Great, great. Is that your piece of artwork we're looking in the background? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. What inspired you to do that kind of work? Um, the, well, most of the sculptural stuff I do is kind of um, the medium itself tends to turn into the narrative a lot of the time. Like, my whole life, I've, just, I've been enthralled with garbage and, like, the refuse of uh, the human race as kind of a modern archaeology. And um, I guess, like, um, it's kind of like a retribution type thing of, like, I, they inspire me to, like, the images of resurrection, like, inspire me to, like, make, you know, recreate, like, the life that's been, like, cast away by others. Cool. Kind of like recycling, isn't that? It, it's recycling, but also kind of like, it's my church, too, kind of. Cool. How long have you been doing this kind of work? Um, like three or four years, I guess. Great, great. Are you a Tucson native, or you just happen to fly in here? Or... Actually, I'm actually from Prescott, and I kind of just wandered in here and met Stephen one day, and we got to talking. And cool, great. Prescott's a great area. It, it's it's great, but not quite as progressive as, as Tucson, as far as the art scene. So is that like a dark angel, or um, or is it the good angel, or...? To me it's more of like a phoenix, like a rebirth from something that was once was something else. Uh, is there anything you would like to add, like anything about the other artists around here, the artwork, or anything you would like to say to anybody out there? No, I think, it's, I think the artwork here is really great. There's a lot of really, really cool artists. Um, unfortunately, I'm not... I'm not more invested in this community. I feel like it'd be nice to be. I wish I knew a lot more of these people. Like, their art's really intriguing to me. But. Okay, great. Thank you for the interview. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Zachary. <laughs> and for our bilingual people who speak Spanish as well, um, we have Ana Cava here and her painting. Um, ¿Los puedes decir qué es, por qué haces estas pinturas? Porque me gusta pintar para, para así pasar mi tiempo, y es en mis tiempos libres. Pinto también flores y paisajes. Sí. Muy bien, ¿y, y, y ¿qué, qué, um, de qué, qué usaste para hacer la pintura? ¿Qué, qué, qué químicos usaste? ¿Este de, es de agua, de aceite? De agua. Pintura de agua, sí. Bien, bien suave, es, es paisaje, ¿correcto? Sí. Puse un paisaje, la otra vez tuve unas flores. Ajá, ajá. Um, um, ¿Eres de aquí de Tucson o de, de dónde eres? Aquí, vivo aquí, pero soy de Sonora. Oh, suave, bien bonito por allá, ¿verdad? Sí, muy bonito, muy bonitos paisajes. ¿Y de, de allá gracias al paisaje? Sí, y, y de aquí de Tucson también. ¿Y qué dices de las pinturas? El resto de las pinturas de aquí, de la gente que, que tienen las pinturas aquí. ¿qué? Están muy interesantes, bien bonitas. Tienen mucho... Ok. Um, mucho colorido. Um, ¿Gustaría decirles algo a su familia? Al, al, ¿Algo al, al, a la gente que está viendo la televisión ahorita? Bueno, pues les mando un saludo y que ojalá se, se inclinen por la pintura, que es muy bonito pintar. Ok, muchas gracias por esta entrevista. Ya, ya, ya puedes descansar. Who are you and why are you here? I'm Michelle Williams and I'm here at Solar Culture. And basically, Steve and I put together a whole workshop for art. And uh, you're allowed to hang up your art once a month, uh, every three months. And and it can it either sells or it doesn't. And it's a really great way to get your art out into the community. What type of media do you work with? Uh, I do oil paint and um, on canvas, and that's basically my medium. How long have you been painting? Um, I've been painting for four years now. I go to the U of A, and I'm an art education major. So this is a good way to get my name out there and get going with my art. What do you plan to do once you graduate? Um, I'm going to be an art teacher. So that's, that's what I want to do. Can you tell me a little bit about one of the paintings that you have up today? Um, Yes, the the one with the desert scene is uh, it's about the environment and it's a political painting that I had to do for class and it's basically about um, kill, how we're kind of killing the desert and 
it's about the desert living and the desert dying. And there's a poem on it that talks about um, the desert dying, and that's, that's about it. Is there anything else you'd like to add about tonight's event? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a great way to get um, art and music together, and Steve and I have just done a really great job with the whole, the whole program, so it's really cool. Okay, That's about it. Thanks yeah. for talking to me. Thank you. Thanks. Why are you here? I'm Nicole Sanderson. I'm here because this is one of my favorite places in Tucson, and I get to exhibit my art. Tell us a little bit about the work that you brought in tonight. Um, it's basil foam and acrylic paint. Um, it's a clock. I just uh, was handed a bunch of basil foam uh, by a friend of mine and decided to have fun with it. And um, uh, Buddhism is one of uh, my interests. It's a pervading theme in my life, and so I decided to um, do a little cartoon carving of a Buddha. And is this the first time you've worked with this type of medium? No, it's not. And how did you first start getting involved with this type of medium? Um, they were leftover pieces given to me by a friend um, and said, like, hey, could, do you think you can do anything with these? They were just like blocks of basil foam. And so I was like, oh, I'll try it, you know. They're fun. And how did you find out about solar culture or about this event? Um, I was told about this event by the owner um, when I came to hang my piece, and uh, I've been here many times. I had something in the last exhibit. Um, I think I found out about solar culture um, by coming to shows, uh, musical performances, uh, earlier this year when I moved here, in last August. Do you have any advice for any artists who might be interested in trying alternative media? Um, just have fun, you know, do it for yourself. Don't be scared of anything. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Who are you and why are you here? I'm Carmiel Banaski. Um, I'm here because Solar Culture is this great cultural center in Tucson. It's just a great place to be. And we get to display our artwork. So, yeah. <laughs> Photography. And tell us a little bit about how you Um, I just used um, mirrors and uh, we were just outside, natural lighting, and um, my friends modeled for me. Uh, the project is about um, the reversal of sexual roles and iconization and other wonderful things like that. <laughs> And why did you produce a piece like this? I was just interested in um, the role of the photographer and and the model, and wanted to do a piece on that. So, yeah, <laughs> just had been a theory of mine for a while that I wanted to produce. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Julie Ramsey, and I'm here to see all the artwork here at this opening tonight. They have one of these about every three months at this gallery. I love coming to see all the different artists. There's about a hundred of them here, I think, and each person gets to put in a couple pieces. They don't charge commission here. It's an amazing space. I love it here, so I'm just checking out the opening. Can you tell us a little bit about the pieces that you've brought in this evening? Yeah, I, I picked two pieces that I've done in the past year. Both of them are the kind of alternate, alternative photograph. Uh, I don't know if you can see them right now, but um, one of them I've burned the actual negative and printed it. Um, another one I've used multiple negatives. And I feel like here at this type of gallery, I can put up the more, um, the less conservative pieces and actually feel like, uh, I, I feel like this is the place to put those pieces of work. Whereas in some other galleries, I've put a little bit more conservative prints where they're, um, it shows the quality of the photograph rather than the concept. It's, so this is more conceptual work. And how did you decide to, to move out of the mainstream and try these alternative methods? Uh, I got bored real quick. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to 
go outside of the box and just try as many things as I could um, with photography and try to get away from the just straight print. So I wanted to do as much as I could um, artistically, I guess. And are, are these images that you developed on your own in a dark room? Yes. I do all my own developing, printing, everything is done by hand. I don't know much about digital. <laughs> okay, great. Well, well, thank you very much for sharing. And is there anything else that you'd like to tell any other aspiring art artists that are out there in Tucson? Um, I would say uh, be very confident about your work, no matter what it is. And constructive criticism um, is, is key. Don't take it to heart. Just listen to what other people have to say and take it for what it's worth to you. And get out and show your stuff. It's, it's like a gift almost. If you can allow other people to see your work, it's like a gift. You're giving them something that they wouldn't have otherwise seen. Thank you very much. Good luck.
participate in the arts as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the piece that you brought tonight? Well, a little bit. Basically, we have two different entities speaking about the same timeline based each on a different foundation. And then there's something very tricky going on with the rest of it, but I, that's kind of a secret at this point. Can you tell us about how you first got involved in working with art? Well, the truth is I had a very boring life, but I felt really inspired by like rock music, and I wanted to like be in a rock band, but I couldn't really play an instrument very well, so I just started kind of branching out and trying a lot of different things, a little acting, a little visual art, um, and I actually do play some music now. I finally actually learned to play. <laughs> Can you tell us how you feel about this venue? Well, I think it's a great place. It's very, very casual. Very easy going. Anyone can hang art here. And they're very supportive of artists in general and in arts in the community. 
Is there anything you'd like to say to any aspiring artists out there? Well, you probably all heard it before, you know, believe in yourself, but I, I think it's true, you gotta believe in yourself, and even if it doesn't pay off, you know, if you've got something in here that says do it, then you gotta just do it. Do it anyway, and just keep at it.